and uh, we will move on with the so we cover the inheritance part as well so we are good there and yes so this is a kind of an add-on as part of my uh, um, curriculum or the topics for discussion I added this as a uh, bonus or addition um, uh, which is an object-based programming um, so we have so far seen an um, object-oriented programming and uh, the concept of object-based programming is a one step back to the object-oriented programming. So the differences between uh, object-oriented and based uh, is a very thin, uh, very narrow again and uh, uh, in the object-based uh, programming it's pretty much a language or a theory uh, which, uh, which is again based on the concepts. Uh, concept of the object and the object based programming language encourages a methodology methodological uh, methodology sorry methodology for uh, designing and uh, creating a program as a set of autonomous uh, components so if you see if you uh, look at the modular approach of writing programs uh, this is uh, programming languages in the in the early in, in the early version of Visual Basic and uh, Hex is one of the very old one which I'm not even aware of. Um, uh, I just got that, uh, but I'm very well aware of Visual Basic. Uh, I worked on Visual Basic, the Lexi uh, language, and I pretty well know what is uh, what is it capable of. Um, so that's uh, that could be my reference point uh, with respect to the object-based programming. Um, and uh, the only difference is that if you look at in terms of the object oriented programming language is that this doesn't support a couple of um, uh, features like the inheritance uh, so we will, Visual Basic doesn't have the inheritance uh, capability although it can still have the define the classes create instance of them become objects you can do a overloading, overriding, you can do all of this polymorphism, you can do encapsulation, you can do uh, abstraction, you can do, but you cannot uh, uh, do inheritance. So uh, that's when um, it became an object-based programming, but it's not an object-oriented programming. So an object-oriented programming should satisfy all of those uh, seven characteristics. Out of them, uh, again, the, one of the highly debatable uh, topic is that the multiple inheritance is one of the debatable topic wherein um, Java doesn't support, VB.NET doesn't support, uh, C Sharp doesn't support, even any .NET languages doesn't support. But although they doesn't support multiple inheritance, they are they claim that they are object oriented or 100% object oriented programming because they have a workaround of using interfaces and uh, they uh, who the respective compilers really uh, make their own point why it is uh, not uh, uh, supporting multiple inheritance uh, the wide variety of uh, arguments go fly around uh, saying um, uh, it reduces the complexity of a program uh, in one sense so that you limit your uh, level of uh, uh, inheritance hierarchy so as the level of inheritance hierarchy grow uh, the complexity of the code also grows so to address that um, uh, they got rid of the multiple inheritance because uh, C++ 100% support multiple inheritance okay so that's the FYI uh, add on to it and object based programming is all about um, um, that and it's a more modular approach uh, but it has some features of the object uh, um, oriented programming and the next one is a very new and latest which is uh, aspect oriented programming so things have been evolving over a period of time and uh, key thing to keep in mind when you talk about aspect oriented programming um, is that uh, this is not a replacement to object-oriented programming. So object-oriented programming has some uh, uh, flaws uh, in sense uh, it is programmatically not possible to not 100% possible to achieve the um, uh, separation of concern. If you new to that uh, separation of concern is one of the basic design principles which is also the first principle of solid principles so solid principles is a set of five principles which are which falls as a backbone for all the programming design um, probably that's my plan to cover that area in the advanced topics 
so the first principle is a separation of concern uh, wherein the responsibility of each of the module or class that it is trying to do is isolated from one another so you uh, that uh, the concern is separated from one uh, object to another object so that you achieve the reusability aspect and reduce the redundancy so that's a base principle for programming or designing uh, your uh, program um, so um, separation of concern is one of the major problem when you design uh, or a pro write a program using the object oriented programming uh, I'll give you a quick example of, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, in as by default, uh, object oriented program is completely of classes and objects. There is, there is no such thing that you can uh, something hang in air. Like if you have, if you want to have a helper method, for example, that writes say information to a log file, or a helper method, uh, helper classes or helper methods that can talk to a database and get you some information you know it, which is uh, really not a, a re real time object that it represents in the real world so these are all called as a cross cutting concerns so the cross cutting concerns is one of the concern in the uh, while designing the uh, program in a true object oriented principles because as per the principles it all talks about uh, having class uh, represent the real world object so these things like exception handling or logging or database interactions so these are a couple of uh, concerns so that you really need in a program but cannot fall under any of these principles so that those are the cross-cutting concerns which are like a big bottleneck when you write a, a dot and program so what that means is in uh, although uh, I have my domain object model which is reflecting to the real-time objects uh, with respect to my business context for example I'm doing a payroll application and my context is deals with the employee and their payroll information uh, so all the entities involved in the payroll uh, payroll generation like employee salary uh, and uh, so on so paychecks and so on so it's, there are a lot of uh, nouns involved in the payroll processing so all these objects uh, they reflect the real world uh, scenario but where the logging or exception handling or all other things fall like uh, intermediate to all of these so every one of these need to uh, implement a logging implement exception handling or implement database access and so on so they are all uh, 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 crossing around all these uh, domain uh, entities so that's why they call cross cutting uh, concerns so they're actually spanning from one layer to other layer or one object to the other object so they are uh, intermediate to one another but again separation of concern is again important like there because I cannot write a, a, a employee class without using a logging in in simple terms in in my example also I am trying to use a console dot write line which is actually writing something to the uh, output right so that's again a separation of concern so what this object is supposed to do is not doing it is doing more than that because it needs to do so so aspect oriented programming is go is trying to address that flaw uh, in the object oriented programming so it has a pretty much uh, uh, the terminology goes so one of the terminology we already discussed the cross cutting concerns another one is uh, is defines an advice and advice is um, is an additional code which is like a logging or exception handling so this is an additional code uh, that can be uh, referred to as an advice that's a terminology used in aspect oriented programming and the point cut is the uh, another keyword which refers to the location or the line of code or, pro, uh, or program execution point where you want to introduce the advice okay so the advice is for example a logging or uh, any helper method that you want to add okay the point where you want to add it is the uh, point cut and the aspect as a um, keyword itself is a union of both um, so it's a combination of a point cut and advice so aspect is the place where you want to uh, introduce an additional line of code uh, at what time and where 
you want to add. So that's the aspect oriented programming concept, uh, conceptually. Um, but who all supports this kind of uh, um, program, uh, this language? Again, uh, this is um, paradigm of programming principles. So the, the well-known as on today is the aspect J, which is for Java. Uh, that's the only language that is a true aspect-oriented programming language. And the rest of them, even including .NET, um, they actually doesn't support uh, uh, the aspect-oriented programming. Uh, but though uh, still the way the, the .NET infrastructure is set up, it is not a very uh, uh, difficult to achieve it. Uh, it's uh, again achievable using uh, um, there's something called a Unity framework, um, uh, which is a part of the dependency injection module, uh, wherein you can actually inject a couple of modules at runtime um, that can achieve the cross-cutting concerns. So at a runtime. So in other words, uh, it if you have an assembly 1 and assembly B. So assembly A is your uh, domain object model, okay? And assembly B is your cross-cutting concern. So I'm separating both the concerns. So I will write my exception logic only in the assembly B, and uh, assembly A is again completely going to be my business specific objects, okay? So I'm not uh, mixing, a, a, playing a mix and match here. So what the compiler expected to do is, at the end, when they compile both these assemblies, they need to be uh, 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 combined and delivered a new uh, deliver a new assembly, which will mix and match both, uh, which will specify where to introduce my aspect. Okay, so that's a part of the point cut, point cut and advice. So you'll have you will define the advice in the assembly B, and also you define the a point cut information where this need to be injected in point assembly A and you compile them and the, uh, the re resulted assembly will have the uh, uh, assembly with the uh, both the union of uh, uni unioning the in inserting the respective uh, aspect at the point cut in, in the assembly A. So that's the uh, level of uh, uh, approach uh, to achieve the cross-cutting concerns so, uh, at the same time satisfying the uh, the first principle called the separation of concern. I hope you got that information uh, into your memory. So unfortunately, I cannot deliver more than that uh, in this aspect because this is just an overview and FYI. And uh, this is gaining a lot of weight in the market uh, down the line. So. This my, but again, remember that this is not actually uh, replacing the object-oriented programming language. Okay, so it is uh, it is supporting the object-oriented programming language. So this aspect-oriented program is an is an add-on to the object. Uh, sorry, aspect-oriented program is an add-on to the OOP. So it's not replacing it. So keep that in mind. And of course, as I mentioned, so in .NET there are workarounds uh, wherein you can use to uh, achieve the aspect oriented uh, uh, principles uh, but uh, straight away .NET doesn't support so the straight away the true uh, aspect oriented programming is a aspect J which is available for Java okay so that's all for now and uh, let me see if I have any questions <laughs>